Today we're going to take a look at the new video component and we're going to specifically look at the HTML5 and the flash capabilities of the new video controller. So here we're going to go into properties and we're going to switch from the YouTube controller that I've covered in a previous video and we're going to take a look at the HTML5 and flash video controller. This will allow you to display HTML5 if it's available and if it's supported with a fallback to flash or you can say use flash but fall back to HTML5 if flash is not available and that would be like on an iPad if you wanted to to say well our my priority is to show flash video but uh, if you can't let's let's go with HTML5 and you can set that priority right here now because we've selected HTML5 we need to supply multiple video types so you'll notice there's we ask for an MP4 video, an AUG video, a WebM video, and these are all different containers with different types of encoding that are supported by the different browsers. Let's take a look at that. First thing I wanted you to take a look at was what does the HTML5 video tag look like? It's really simple. So you just include the video tag, specify a source, in this case we're specifying an MP4, specify a poster which is a, typically just a static image that you want to display, control so that you can uh, pause and so on, and default here is your device doesn't support MP4 video container and H.264 video. So if you included this tag within a page, it would, it would play on a number of uh, devices and browsers. So it would play on the iPhone, it would play on the uh, iPad, it would play in Safari, it wouldn't play in Firefox, um, it would play in IE, it wouldn't play in Opera. So, you know, this is what causes the problem with HTML5 video is that, yes, we have a tag, but there is no standard on the container type or the encoding. So there's a lot of confusion on, on codecs and compression and containers, but so I thought I'd maybe help to clarify that. The containers or, or file types, which is typically what you see, are FLV, MP4, AUG, and WebM. Now, though each container can contain one or more codecs. So Flash typically has H.264 uh, video, but it can also have VP6 or Sorensen Spark encoding. Uh, MP4 typically will contain MPEG4 or H.264 encoding. AUG typically contains Theora encoding and WebM typically contains uh, VP8 encoded video. So when we take a look at the different browsers, we can see they support different codecs and different containers. Safari supports H.264, an MP4, and a QuickTime container. Safari on a PC requires a QuickTime download. Mobile Safari, which is on the iPod, the iPhone, and the iPad, supports MP4 video with H.264 encoding. Firefox 3, Opera, and Chrome support Theora encoding in an AUG container. The new Firefox 4, Opera, and Chrome support VP8 encoding in a WebM container. And IE9 supports H.264 encoding in an MP4 container. And Microsoft has also committed to supporting uh, VP8 in a WebM container. So you can see supporting HTML5 video takes a little bit of work. So in this case, we've asked for a hybrid HTML5 Flash player. We can pick numerous Flash players. So this is an open source player. The Flow player is the one by, used by default. And the you can also set the video player priority. Here we're saying Use HTML5 video if it's available. We have autoplay checked off. We can specify the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio can be 16.9 or 4.3, and it will automatically adjust the height accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and switch that back to 16.9. And let's take a look at Live Preview. In this case, Live Preview uses an older version of Internet Explorer, so this is a Flash player. So let's go ahead and just play that. You have control for audio here. You can go full screen if you'd like. And let's go.
go back to design mode. So uh, you've got numerous options. You can select whether you may just want HTML5 only. You may just simply want Flash only. And all of the options will change accordingly. So let's go back to HTML5 and Flash. And you can specify whether or not you want to uh, center the component in the container. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and save this, and then we'll put this thing to work. OK, I've saved off my uh, component. It's called the HTML5 Flash Video Control. And we're going to go ahead and go into my contacts demo. I've used this previously when I was showing you how to work with uh, YouTube. We'll go in here to uh, Live Preview. And here you'll remember this is what our component looks like. And when we click on the button, it brings up a YouTube video. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add uh, another button. And in this case, what we'll do is bring up a HTML5 uh, Flash Video container. So let's come on down to the bottom here and let's just insert a button. And we'll just label it uh, HTML5 video. So let's go ahead and take a look at Live Preview. So now I have my grid, and we still see our YouTube videos. And the HTML5 video button is, will show on all rows because we haven't uh, entered a show hide uh, criteria. OK, so now we're going to add uh, the video component to the click event. We're going to add a new action. We're going to open up a video controller component. We're going to select our HTML control. Notice all the arguments now because you need to supply an MP4 video, an AUG video, WebM video, poster image, and, and then you can specify a uh, fallback title. These would all be bound to fields uh, in your table. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with the default so we can see something happen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the, uh, let's change the uh, height and the width here. of the modal pop-up window that we're going to bring up. And I'm not going to allow resizing on that. And let's just go and we'll take a quick look at that. I don't need any comment there. We'll save that. Go back into Live Preview. Now what will happen is, uh, again, the button's now going to show on every row because we don't have any reject uh, a show hide uh, statement in here. But when I click on it, it's going to bring up a container and the container will be the video that is the default video. Um, and in this case, again, it's being brought up inside of a uh, Flash container because Live Preview here is running uh, in an older version of Internet Explorer. And now, notice I close the window without stopping the video. So again, we have an issue here that we need to resolve. So what we want to do to resolve the video playing is we need to go back to the on click event and we need to edit the action that's going to open the video controller. And what we need to do is we need to call the clear video method of the video controller. So we insert this placeholder and it's going to be the uh, grid child object. And then we just call the uh, clear video method. That should be all set. We're going to go ahead and save that. So now when we do a live preview, and we go ahead and launch the video, start the playing. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And notice the video now stops. So that's a, a method that you need to know about and you need to be aware of uh, when you're bringing either the YouTube videos in or the HTML5 videos. And, and that is the clear video method of the uh, of the controller. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So well, what would this look like if we we're running it? Oh, let's say in uh, let's run it in Chrome. So here we are in Chrome. I'm going to go ahead and hit the HTML5 video, and now we're running uh, in a uh, a native HTML5 player. This is 
because Chrome supports HTML5 and we have the component set to use HTML5 as the priority, the first priority, you can see that it's playing HTML5 video within the container. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of the HTML5 and Flash capabilities of the new video controller component. Thank you.